Hi, my name is Jane, and today I'll be talking about a project I did recently. Uh, I am an independent data visualization designer. I'm based in Toronto, and on this project, I'm going to talk about Tekken. So Tekken is a very popular fighting game, and uh, if you've never heard of Tekken or never played any fighting games, uh, it might be hard to keep up, but I'll try my best to explain everything so that everything makes sense. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about myself. You can learn more about uh, my work and who I am on jingzang.ca. That's my personal website. I'm just going to dive right into the project. Early on in the year, there was a, a demo of a game called Final Fantasy VII Remake released, and I was mesmerized by the fighting mechanics. And I wondered to myself um, if I could visualize the fighting game mechanics somehow, some way. I wonder if I could quantify it. So I started doing some little research on and off, uh, and I found these two really great resources on YouTube. This one looks at combat system. This one looks at specifically fighting games and um, breaking down the mechanics of it. And so um, this one introduced me to, uh, it talked a lot about Tekken as a main case study. And I decided to explore Tekken as a game, as a, as a project, um, as a main topic for this project. And I have very little experience, almost zero experience playing Tekken at that point. Uh, I knew about Tekken, but I never played it. And um, so for those who don't know, Tekken is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, fighting game, uh, player versus player, and it's been around for a very long time, um, but it's really challenging to master it. So this is kind of how it looks like when you're playing it. So I did a lot of research on Tekken to better understand it. Um, I watch a lot of tournaments which was really, really helpful. Tournaments are helpful in that the commentators will narrate what's going on and they'll be able to give you an idea of what to expect or how to, you know, how to understand certain things that are happening. Uh, I watched a lot of videos also on, I looked up threads and looked up a lot of things online to better understand the game. I also engaged on the subreddit for Tekken. So there's a huge community that's really strong there and they're very active. Um, and I decided to ask them for feedback and ideas. So I started off by asking them about this idea for this project and what they thought about it. Um, to my surprise, people responded to my post, um, even though I was a nobody to them. And um, they also gave me suggestions. So first, um, someone said, hey, there might be interest in something like this. Um, you know, this might be something that people would want to try out or maybe want to learn more about. Um, this, this was a moderator of that subreddit. And uh, they said, you could try uh, visualizing effective range. So effective range is understanding how um, close or far your, your, your certain moves are. So for example, um, there's some moves that are close range and there's some moves that are farther, right? And um, they, they gave me suggestions. And so um, after looking through all the comments, um, I decided to approach this by looking at one character and that character was Josie Rizal. So she is a relatively new character. She's very beginner friendly and she's also very fun to play. So I decided to maybe explore this project through this one particular character, Josie Rizal. Um, and so this is a kind of a big project take on, right? Like how would you start? Like what would you visualize? What would I quantify? Um, through my research, I came up with, I, I found this table, this data table, that was collected by a lot of volunteers. Um, there's also a lot of errors, but you know we're just gonna work with what we have. Um, each uh, row represents one one specific attack or one move. So every character has about a hundred moves, I think, and there's about thirty characters. So this is a lot of data, right? I'm only looking at a small portion of this. Um, and there are these attributes that define each move. So I'm just going to explain um, a little bit about this just to give you some context on how to read it and how to understand it. So first is command. So this is in this move, uh, this is the command input. Command input means what you put into the controller, into the system, right, to execute it. So here, um, there's two things to consider. First is direction of your character, so which direction they're going to move in. So for example, up is jumping up, down is crouching, right? F is forward, B is back. And this is the limbs that they're going to attack with. So it's left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. Um, so if I'm going to execute this move, which is a, don't worry about the rage, down slash F plus one plus two, which is down forward one, two. It means I move the direction down forward. So diagonal, and then I press one, two together. So it's a left and right punch, right? Um, and so in this case, this is how you would do it. So next, um, attribute I'm going to be talking about is startup frame. So startup frame is really important in games in general. So here, uh, I pulled this from uh, this video. 
a light attack and heavy attack. So every attack has a startup frame animation before they hit the opponent. So this one uh, has 14 frames and it's considered a light attack because it's very fast. Usually light attack aren't very powerful. They're very fast and they're just kind of do a little bit of damage. Heavy attack, more frames, right? Uh, until it lands, but it leaves it more vulnerable because it takes longer for it to eventually hit. So people take advantage of this, right? If your attack is too long, people can actually intercept and interrupt your attack and they can actually do damage to you in that way. So this is kind of how to understand there's something uh, with, with, with starboard frame animation. So when it comes to how people apply or talk about this data, I think um, generally what I've seen is people kind of just use it as play text. They don't really do anything to visualize in any forms, right? So here are some examples. So here was from a forum from, on Reddit and people talk about it by just text. So this is looking at, you know, these attributes I've highlighted here, right? Um, and this is how they would just talk about the data, right? And this is a video explaining uh, breaking down certain moves and same thing, it's just text although they pull more attributes from it, but this is how they communicate with data. And I think there's a lot more potential. There's a lot more things we could do with visualizing this information because um, a lot of times people are comparing moves to each other. So in this case, right, it's looking at 15 moves. Um, and in this video, they compare a huge list of moves. But in this format, it's really hard to, to make comparisons in, um, data wise. So. You know, as someone who practices data visualization, for me, I'm always thinking, how can we uh, visualize something and make that helpful for people to understand, right? Because ultimately, I think that's what data visualization is good. It's good at enabling comparisons. Um, and this is really what the angle I was tackling this project from. What's a bar chart with one bar, right? It's kind of useless. You might as well just put one number, but if you have a series of bars, you're more likely to understand everything. Well, not everything, but you're more likely to understand what's going on in context better. So I'm going to just talk about the versions I've made and I'm just going to show you really quickly here, but I'll go through each one a little more detail. So this is version one I made, uh, version two and version three. There are a lot of changes. I'll go through them. So th this was my goal in general. My goal was to create a reference to help people build combos and tactics by visualizing the frame data. So the frame data was coming from um, the table I showed you earlier. Players can better assess risks and rewards of certain moves. So this is really important for me as well. Uh, so I decided to start off by visualizing a small set of moves. So here I found a list on Reddit um, and I, I visualized five moves. So here, each section here is one move, one fighting move, right? One move you can execute on. And this is a legend that comes with, this is on a, a letter size sheet. Um, this legend is kind of ridiculous, but um, you know, it's, it's really chunky, right? Like a wonky kind of visualization I made at the first go. So I, I asked the Reddit community, the tech and Reddit subreddit community, hey, what do you think? And I got eaten alive. <laughs> I got torn apart. Um, you know, this is the critical feedback. I think the most critical was they said there is no need to visualize any of this, right? Why bother for you to visualize when you just look it up on a website and just look at the table? I don't need to learn some confusing graphics to, to understand what's going on. And this is a really good point to understand is that not everyone wants to learn something complicated to understand something. But for them to do that, it has to be valuable enough and insightful enough that they will want to learn how to read your graphic to understand something, right? Um, it's complicated how I said that, but take that in consideration when you, when you design something com complex, it has to be valuable enough. And what I made was simply a copy and paste of the table. And I need a way to add more value for, for people to want to learn how to read it. Uh, this was a technical feedback where someone said, hey, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's great what you made, but like there's some things I think you can improve tech technically wise. Like, you know, it's really hard to compare certain d data points. And also when I look at the visualization, I just want to look at the number. I don't really want to look at the, with the actual visualization and count it right for. So what I what they mean by this is, first of all, uh, if you look at this bar, it's actually not really easy to well, it sort of is. But, you know, it's not really easy to compare. Right. It kind of defeats the purpose and enabling comparisons. Right. And they also said, hey, there's like fifth, there's number 15 here, but I'd rather look at that than count everything here and know that it's 15 boxes. Good points. Um, here, this is a final comment that's really constructive. This is from the moderator again. You know, they're really good at giving feedback. Um, they said, um, beginners generally don't need to create their own combos, right? What people can do is look at sample combos provided in game. And so, I, okay, this is actually a really good point because 
it's good enough to just memorize the combos. You don't really have to create your own unique ones. Um, they think that it's more important or more beneficial for, for players to, uh, to use a set of moves along with a game plan. So they're talking about higher level play, right? They said it's more interesting if I was came up with a novel way to teach players something about Tekken. And also they said I should consider asking more specific questions to gain a better understanding of how players generally, generally use this sort of data. Really, really good feedback. And I thought to myself, okay, I think, you know, like I need to reframe how I'm approaching this. So I felt really awful right after I, I, I gave this feedback because I thought I missed the mark. I thought, wow, I made something really bad. <laughs> you know, people are just like eating me alive. But um, this is also a good lesson on, you know, testing ideas out early and that you can figure out if you're in the right direction or if it's something people really, really need or not, right? And it can help pivot if it's not. You can just modify as you go. And so I just, you know, I took a break for a couple of days. I just didn't work on it. I didn't think about it. I just let, let it be. And then I had to figure out how to move forward. So I had a choice. I can either abandon this project completely or, or keep trying. I was pretty close to giving up because I didn't know how to move forward from here. I was just like, oh, I'm stuck. This is it. But I decided to move forward. So the first thing I did was I refine, redefined my goal. I had to figure out a more specific goal, right? So the problem was help people build, con build combos and tactics. So that's to uh, that's not needed right as mentioned by the feedback people can just use sample combos but i think tactics is where i could probably build on right this may be something there so this one is where i'm going to keep and players is very general i need a more specific target audience i'm trying to figure out so how do i you know how do i get more specific how do i narrow down how do i find where to go um i found uh, a oops uh here yeah i made too many assumptions and target audience is too vague here, okay, so I found a beginner's mega thread on Reddit and it was very, very helpful where a lot of beginners would just post things and um, ask questions that probably many people have already asked before. And without knowing, I just sort of, you know, I, I grabbed a sticky note, a sticky pad, and I just write each comment on, an, on a sticky note just so I can see it, right, as I'm going through the comments. And without knowing, I started seeing a theme and I was organizing all these sticky notes and I had a, you know, a couple of columns and then I this this is the summary of the what I what I learned. So generally, people ask questions that are very very vague, or very specific. If their questions are very vague, it means they just started out. They need help on how to start. If it's specific, it means they sort of have an idea of what they're doing, but they need more help on something more technical. For example, I decided to tackle this column, which is a little bit more specific, right? And look at character specific tactics which is something I was sort of already working towards, right? Um, this is like, you know, tips on how to effectively play a specific character or how do you, you know, counter other opponents with a specific character. Um, when you learn to play Tekken, it's advised that you start with one character and try to get better at that one character. The reason being is there's actually, you have to know how to deal with other characters from that one character. Um, and this is a good strategy starting out. So I decided to um, think about tactics. And I came across this video on YouTube that looks at um, breaking down a game plan for Josie Rizal. She looks different here, but this is Josie Rizal. And what's interesting about what this um, YouTuber did was they had every single move, they had a category that went along with it. So it defined what this move was good for and it applied to what situations. And so from version one, this is what version two looks like. So initially it was just everything on one sheet of paper and then I broke it down to different cards. The reason why I decided to do cards and it, I kind of wanted to do them beginning but I didn't really know how was I wanted the cards to be movable, to be something you can manipulate and move around. When it's like this, it's usually fixed way. It's fixed format, but when it's like this, this is essentially a small multiple, that's it, right? It's just a small multiple and you can move things around and you can compare things. Um, so this is the approach I took. So one of the changes I made was I added this column, oh, sorry, this um, section, which defines this move. It, it, it kind of labels it, right? And this is really meaningful because, um, you know, this is pretty much a direct copy and paste uh, from the table, but this one adds meaning. It helps you understand what all this data together means. So if this is good for punish standing and punish with or range, uh, I'm not going to explain what that means, but let's just say that this move is good for range attacks. 
and it's good for it's it punishes sort of like countering in a way but not exactly i don't want to get technical but this is how you would understand this move for example another change i did was i uh, made it more countable so here we have uh 15 boxes right you don't really want to count 15 but i decided to maybe i'll group it into fives so that way it's easier to count um I then asked for feedback one on one. So I sent this version two to this moderator and I got feedback from them. I didn't want to do a group huge like session again. It was, it was too overwhelming. So they told me that what they thought identified a problem that was relevant and thought and they thought I was, you know, thoughtful about my approach. They saw utility and how it could be useful for players. So for they their the way they viewed it was it might be helpful for people to um, compare a set of cards for one character to another character in the sense of maybe if I've, I'm more learning this character it can help me better understand which ones are more similar for me to pick up next or learn next. They think the best idea comes from labeling the move lists right um, which is helping you understand how to apply them so they're talking about this section here and if it wasn't for that video I wouldn't be able to have advanced this far right and so version two pretty much stayed very similar in version three. Um, the only changes were aesthetic. So in here, what I did was I uh, found this concept art image from the Tekken Facebook page and I um, worked backwards. So I learned that, you know, she's, I know that she's a Filipino character. She's based on a Filipino character. Um, her colors are actually come from the national flag, which is blue, yellow, white, and red. And then the flowers here are based on the Filipino jasmine, which is, you know, Philippines national flower. Um, and so that's kind of what influenced how this card looks like based on these things, right? And so this is the end result, right? These are the cards. So it looks like this. It's not very large, it's quite small. It's just, um, you know, it's like normal card. And um, I, I was really happy with what I made at the end. So it was lots of feedback from the community. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to apply these cards. So what's what's the, the most beneficial aspect of these cards is you can use them, hold them, and compare and move around. So let's look at this set of moves. So this is Switch Dance. This is a move that only, this is a set of moves that is unique to Josie and only she can execute on them. She Only she can do them. So the first thing I can do is to help me understand these moves and just is know which moves are the fastest, which ones are the slowest. So currently, as it is, it's ranked by startup frame animation. Remember, there are slow moves and there are fast moves. So this one, the flowers, each petal is a frame. And the, the greater number of flower petals, the more frames it has, the slower it is. This is the fastest. So it's ranked by slow to fast. Um, and this is important to know. You want to know which, which moves you have are the fastest and slowest. I could also understand this by mix up. So, so mix up is a very particular situation that happens where certain moves look very similar, but you have to get your opponent to guess. So make, this is Switch Dance 3 and this is Switch Dance 2. And if you see the beginning, they look very similar. They're both a start with a kick, high kick, and then this one ends with a kick on the kick and this one ends with a punch. So you kind of want to mix these up as you're playing the game to get your opponent to guess because the outcome is different. Now you're not going to understand what I'm about to say right now. But no, think about how I'm using these cards. So if, if it was up to me, I would prefer to use this card, this move, because it's a little bit faster. And also it does um, plus five on hit, which means it gives me a little bit of frame advantage. This one does a minus 12 on block, which is not really favorable. So this one minus six on block is much better. This does a crumple stun. I think that's pretty good, Like, but usually launch is more powerful. When you do launch, you can do juggle attacks, right? You can keep doing, you can link a lot of attacks together. Launch is very vulnerable. So, and they're both very similar in terms of damage and effective range. But generally, I will try to aim to have this attack uh, more often, but I'll try to use this one to trick them so they don't block appropriately. So that's how I would apply this card. Or I could also arrange these cards by effective range. So here, this is all range one, this is range two. So these are close range, this is a little bit farther range. Uh, range zero, no character in between. Range one, you could fit one character between your opponent. Range two, you could fit two, that's what that means. And so these are the cards, right? And you know, imagine if you tried to explain what I just did, what I just tried to talk through with just the table. I don't think that's 
easy to do. I'm sure it's possible, but it's quite challenging, right? Just looking at the numbers, it's, it's really hard to do it. And so I'm really interested through this project on showing people how to think about the game, not just how to play the game. And this was a, my favorite comment, which was uh, when the moderator told me, I've never seen anyone with your skill take uh, skill set take an interest in Tekken. I'm excited to see the end product. And for me, that's what's exciting about this project was I was able to inject data visualization in a place that typically doesn't use data visualization, but create something useful for the community. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of applications of that. And for me, this is what was the most exciting aspect of it. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this talk. I'd uh, love to see you in the next video. Take care.